In the last lesson I showed you about a while loop and if you recall in the while loops that we used in the last example each of them had three things in common. First of all we always set a variable to some initial value then we had the while loop itself which contained the conditional expression which we're testing for. In this case we're testing for if i is less than 4 and last at the end of the loop we had some operation which was designed to increment the variable. It is very often the case that you have a loop that works in this fashion. And whenever you have a situation that you have a loop that has those three things, an initial value, a condition to test for, and an operation at the end of the loop that is designed to increment or decrement a variable, very often you can convert that loop into a for loop, which is a different kind of loop besides the while loop, and I'll show you how that works. So let's go ahead and start with a basic program. So let's create a variable, we'll call it i, and this will be our looping variable. We'll start by setting it to zero. Now what I'm going to do is show you two different ways to create the same loop. First by using while, and then by using for. So let's start with while. So in our last example we first of all set the variable to what we wanted. Let's go ahead and set i equal to 4. Now we have our while loop. Let's say that while i is less than 8 and then we have what we're going to do. Let's, let's run a printf statement. The value of i is and then we'll print whatever i is. And just to avoid confusion, keep in mind that this percent i just means a placeholder for any integer. The fact that the variable name is i and the i here is just coincidence. Now last we're going to have our incrementing operator and there you go there is our complete loop. So if we run this program and just to make this a little easier to understand let's go ahead and add that. And you can see that i started at 4 and this loop executed until I reached 8 in which case it didn't execute because it was no longer less than 8. Okay so if we wanted to convert this into a for loop here's what we do. In a for loop you start with the word for just like with a while loop and you have the parentheses which are going to contain the expression of the for loop and then you have the braces which are the block of code that's going to execute. So inside of the block of code we're just going to put the same printf statement that we had before. Now what about inside the parentheses? Well just like the while loop you you put the condition you're testing for. The difference is you get to put two additional things. You can put the initial expression for example i equals 4 and you can put the condition at the the expression at the end of the loop which is designed to increment or decrement the variable so we can say i plus plus and that's it that's all there is to it it's very similar to the while loop this part in the middle is the same and that's it you don't have to you don't have to write anything else you don't have to write i is 4 here and you don't have to write i plus plus here because you've done it here instead. And that's the advantage of using a for loop is that you can do those three things in one line. So if we run this code you'll see that we get exactly the same result. The very first time it runs it says the value of i is 4 because that's what our initial expression does. It sets i equal to 4 and then so long as i is less than 8 just like in the while loop it's going to continue to run and each time it runs it's going to execute the the expression here which is going to increment the variable i so how would we transform this into code that was not within a loop like we've done before well one way you can do that is you can first of all convert it to a while loop so let's do that. Let's convert the for loop directly to a while loop. We know that the initial variable is, uh, expression is going to go up here, the conditional expression is going to stay where it is, and the incrementing operation is going to go to the bottom of the program. And now we can go ahead and convert the while loop directly 
like this. We have to keep track of i. We know that initially i is set to 4, so i is equal to 4, and we know that i is going to increment each time. So it will be like so. The first time i will be 4, then 5, then 6, then 7, and at that point i is no longer less than 8. Now we can go ahead and replace the i's here. And now we can simply delete this excess. And we have now converted our loop back into code that is not contained within the loop. So if we run this, and you'll see that we get the exact same result. So one more time, let's go ahead and convert it to a while loop and then to a for loop. So first of all to the while loop, we know that what we have here is since i is changing by 1 each time, we know that i is going to increment. We know that i is going to be initially set to 4, so we, we already have enough information. We can create our while loop. While i is less than 8, we know we're going to have an incrementing operation at the end, and we know we're going to set i equal to 4, and then all we need to do is just we don't need this. Just copy in our printf statement and last change this to i and we're done. Now we have converted it to a while loop. Now to convert it to a for loop we simply move our initial expression and our incrementing operation. Notice that, and of course we change it to four, Notice that there's no semicolon at the end here. You only have two semicolons, one after the initial expression and one after the conditional operation. And there you go. So now that you understand this, let's go ahead and look at the program that we had in Lesson 13.1 and change that program so that instead of using a while loop, it uses a for loop. Okay, so here we are. We're looking once again at the program from the previous lesson. So here, for our first while loop, we've already initialized the variable i, so we really don't need an initial expression, so we can just put a semicolon, basically have a blank initial expression. Then we have our condition, which is i is less than 4, and last, we need our incrementing or decrementing operation, which in this case is going to be i++, the same as right here, and we're done. That's all we had to do for this while loop, and of course change it to 4. Now just so that we know that we haven't broken our program, we can run it and make sure that it executes as we expect. And you can see it still says the year is 2012, the month is August, and the day is the 5th of August. So you can see that everything is still running the way it did before. Now let's look at the next one. Here again we've already initialized the variable j so we don't need an initial expression. We keep our conditional statement as it is and now we have two incrementing operations. Now this is a difference to what you're used to. When you have two operations at the end of a for loop, keep in mind we're changing this to a for loop, you do not separate the expressions with semicolon, you separate them with commas because the semicolon inside of the parentheses of a for loop has a different purpose which is to separate your three expressions. Your initial expression which goes here before the first semicolon, the conditional statement, and the post loop expression which executes at the end of each loop. So here we're going to say j++ comma i++ rather than semicolon. Otherwise it's the same as it is here. And now we're done with that for loop. Again we can run the program if we want and we can see that it still executes exactly the same and so we know everything is fine. And now here we are having an initial expression so we can just go ahead and move that right into our loop. Of course we're changing this to a for loop. And here again we have two expressions and whenever you have two or more expressions inside of the parentheses of a for loop, 
that are that are part of either the initial expression or the incrementing or decrementing operation you separate them with commas not semicolons and then we're done and we can erase that extra line there so if we run this program you will see that it executes exactly the same. Now I want to leave it as an exercise to you to take this code in this program and convert it from the for loop to a while loop to no loop and back. That will help you to understand better how this process works and I encourage you to experiment with this on your own in your own program to get a feel for how it works. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson.